Hello again. Uh, this project is uh, going to be an unusual one in several senses of the word. And I'm going to talk about the, the concept before getting into the technical side. Now the subject, the patient as I like to call him, is this guy right here. And it is a uh, Dunhill, you can tell by the dot, in a semi-rare shape called the 848 is the shape number. It's an ODA pipe. It's about seven inches long. It's a big guy. And uh, it's not common and it's downright rare in this uh, particular finish. And the backstory on how it came to have this finish is where things get interesting. It's called the Red Bark, and that existed from 72 to, I think, 85, maybe 86. It was short-lived, kind of a failed experiment, and no one's quite sure why, other than it coincided, meaning the life of the finish coincided with a rough time in the Dunhill corporate history, which is in the very late 60s, early 70s. They uh, had a, a, a push in the company to streamline everything. They reduced the number of shapes that they made and they reduced the number of steps in production to make certain or make all their pipes so that they could get them out the door faster from when the first human hands first touched them to when they went out the door the, the length of time was reduced and so they ended up having uh, some of their worst ever pipes were produced at that time and this is no secret I'm not slandering the company there have been hobby uh, historians that have, have remarked on this for years. Anyhow, that the red bark was invented at the same time as the cost accountants went crazy with production methods uh, is probably not a coincidence that the, uh, the red bark disappeared. Now, what that resulted in is a very interesting situation because these are 848s as well. This one is from the 60s, this one's from the 80s, this one's from the 50s. And that's important because we can tell by looking at these what Dunhill thought the 848 was going to be or should be. What made it through the QA process in the 50s, the 60s, and the 80s is something quite different from what was allowed to pass the QA department with flying colors in the 70s. So, it occurred to me that modifying or adjusting this sloppy pipe, we'll call it the sloppy pipe, and I'll uh, be specific about there here in a minute, that adjusting this, changing it in subtle ways so that it matches the production of better periods would not be a bad thing. We'll call it like a makeover. Because cosmetic changes are done in the pipe world all the time. If you own a pipe and you drop it on rough concrete and it dimples the finish or cracks this or that, you get it fixed. What happens if the problem was created at the factory and it was sold with a defect? Should it be fixed the same way as if the customer caused the injury to it? Well, that's almost a philosophical question, but I've decided that the answer is Sure, why not? And I base that conclusion 
on imagining a conversation with the workmen at the time who were being pushed hard to send stuff out the door that they were not happy with. And we knew they could do better because we've got it in our hands. We've seen it. We know it's better. They could do better. They just weren't allowed to. That if I could go back in time and say, you remember those pipes that they forced you to turn out in the mid 70s? Well, we're cleaning those up one by one, and we're making them something you'd be proud of. And I think they would smile. They'd raise their glasses and say, good job, get on with it. I'm, nothing's going to dissuade me of that notion. So here we go. What's wrong with this guy? Because at, at first grab, you think, well, it's a, okay, it's a pipe. Just put tobacco in it, it'll smoke. What the hell's the problem here? I will be specific. Some of it's internal, by the way. Okay, first of all is the color. This thing is almost a flamingo pinkish orange. It's just garish as hell. Well, we know from other red barks that that was not what a red bark was, was supposed to have been in the beginning. This is. And side by side, it's pretty dramatic. This is basically a mahogany, a red mahogany version of a shell. And this is a real live red bark, 120. But this, is, this finish is created with a, a layering. It's several steps. And this is just splash it with some red paint and call it good. So that's the first thing. Let's make the finish on this rough patch production match when they cared more and they produced pipes that looked like this. That's one. Number two, the profile is weird on this and from looking at a good example we know that the uh, it'll work well here. We know by checking the line, you can see where the this eraser, it's a piece of rubber. If you go around the bowl, all the way around, even though the surface is textured from sandblast, it's actually architecturally very straight. And that's the magic of this bowl shape. It's a, it's a canted Dublin, and it, they're supposed to be a conical section. Very jaunty, very classy and stylish when they're done right. But they're easy to do wrong. You know, the slightest inward curve or scoop out of the side and that straight line, she no work. And this is another one. And it's these are really uh, special pipes. They're big, impressive things. And then this one. And it's difficult to see on camera here because the closer you get, you know how lenses do weird stuff. But this guy was either over blasted or the wood hardness varied enough that when they were done, they should have just tossed it into the reject pile and gone about their business. Because there's a spot, particularly one right there, that's almost like a growth, like a tumor or something that bulges out the side and causes the a bean pot like lip to be created through this area here. And it's hard to see again on this camera angle, but if you look at it, had it in hand, it's almost like a point right here. This thing is like a stop sign with five or it would be a pentagram, pentagonal, that as the more you look at this, the more jacked up it is, meaning the less it looks like this one. So, as long as we're going to change the finish color, let's straighten out the lines. And we know we can do that because you've seen on, on previous uh, videos where you take the wood down and retexture it invisibly so it looks like it's been sandblasted even though it's been do done by hand. So that's number two. Number three, the airway diameter on this thing is a group three size, which makes no sense at all. That's no big deal. We just take the proper uh, drill bits and enlarge the 
uh, airway size. And also, the slot on this is 1 16th of an inch high, which is ludicrously small. That's like a group two, group three maybe. And why that ended up on a pipe that's seven inches long and 80 grams or whatever these things are, I don't know, but you have trouble getting a standard pipe cleaner through that. So make the slot taller, make the airway larger. What size? Well, exactly the same as the other three, these three good ones that we've got here. The same thing applies to the uh, thickness of the bite zone here. That on this pipe is 0.181 inches, and that is much thicker than Dunhill produced both before and after their rough patch in the mid-70s. So we'll clean that up. And last but not least, somebody got just flat lazy in this case. And because it's hard to see without having it in hand, but here, this guy, or Ed, pick any of them, they're all the same. They're really well done in that the, the stem starts out as a straight line at the end of the shank and continues in a straight line on both top and bottom until you get to the button. It's, it's a, a section, like a, a pizza wedge that doesn't have any scooping and it doesn't have any bulging. This is a straight line. If you take a, a, a straight edge of some kind and put it on there, they're all straight. Well, this one is straight on the top and it's straight on the bottom but it doesn't go far enough. This one actually has bulge right here. The end of the straight line is where the end of my finger is touching. And here's a diagram of it. The thin line is what it should be. And the fat line is what it is. So we've got an elbow in there. That whoever was shaping this stem got it mostly finished and the buzzer went off and they were forced to send it on down the line. So we're going to remove the excess material and when we're done we're going to end up with uh, the shanks about the same length, everything is about the same here. It's, we're going to have in effect a red finished 1950s pipe or 60s pipe red bark that is going to be cut, fit, and finished as if it was made in a different age, different era. Now, there are going to be people who are, will be upset by this because they'll say, wait a minute, as a historical object, you're contaminating it. You're making the work of the period seem better than it actually was. It's no longer historically accurate. To which I say, yep, that is 100% true. But I circle back around to saying the people who were forced to put it out the door prematurely knew they weren't doing their best work because we've seen what they did before and they did what we've seen what they produced after when the cost accountants weren't in charge and we know what they would have done had they been given the opportunity. And I'm certain they'd be happy that somebody in the future was correcting those oversights or those mistakes. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I'm going to call it a makeover. It's like movie star style. They have makeovers. Well, pipes have makeovers too. So there we go. And uh, I'm going to shut the camera off, prep some stuff, and we'll get on with it. Technically, there's nothing much happening here that you haven't seen before, but I thought you'd want to see the transformation and understand the thinking that went into this project. Alrighty then, back in a minute.